folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing the movie review this week. It's a family favorite film that came out just five years ago, since July 23rd, 2010, which would have celebrated its fifth anniversary, called Ramona and Beastis. It's based on a series of novels by author Beverly Clearly, who just turned 99 this year. She's going to be 100 next year, of course. Yeah, the oldest offer that we ever have, which is actually based on a book called Henry Huggins, which Beasts and Ramona were based on, which actually created eight of the entire series of Ramona Cribbly, a little girl who grows up to become a tomboyish, pesky girl who wants up having wild imaginations and gets through a lot of trouble you know between having to deal with at school and at home you know with a lot of her friends she lives with her family at click the tap street in portland oregon with her sister named Beesis, you know nicknamed for beatrice along with their mother and father Robert and Dorothy yeah it was very popular back in the 50s the whole series of books uh, ranges from 1955 through 1999 and it did actually had a TV series that came out in the late 80s yeah 1988 to be exact which actually stars Sir Polly in the role of Ramona Crimley yeah and I actually remember watching the series when it aired on PBS so I mean, in Los Angeles, it would be on KCT on Sunday mornings. And it only lasted 10 episodes, and I did watch all of them when it aired. It went on home video later on, and I actually remember renting some VHS tapes of it. I think my school probably watched it as well, because I know I read, like, one or two of the books. So I, I figure I recognize what Ramona Quimley was. So... When I heard that they were going to make a movie adaptation of a popular book, um, I was kind of curious about it because I was actually wondering if they were going to probably focus on what the, the series was supposed to be about. And I know that's what they're supposed to do. Not to mention the fact that they got Selena Gomez in the film as well, since she's very popular in the Disney Channel series The Wizard of Ravelly Place. Yeah. And I know they have newcomer Joey King, you know, who later went on to do the film The Conjuring and The Oz, The Great and Powerful. You know, those films that suddenly became as we know today. Yeah. Yeah, and she was only 10 years old when she played the role of Ramona. So I, I figure she does look good for the part. The same way that Sarah Pauly had did, you know, back in 1988, you know, before she went on to do films like Go and and the Dawn of the Dead remake as well. So yeah. And this is a Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy combo pack that I bought recently at 7-Eleven for $4.99. So yes, this is definitely what it looks like <laughs> um, as we speak. Because <laughs> it has all three discs inside. Yeah, you can see this one along with these two but I know the digital copy wouldn't work because <laughs> it's expired <laughs> so what's the point already because now they just use simply paper <laughs> just have the voucher just to type up all the codes and I'm glad they used regular cases for this so at least they didn't use that Eagle Boss case like others have but I did remember seeing the trailer for this film when I went to go see How You Train Your Dragon and Toy Story 3, so I figured, yeah, I would check it out someday. And I saw it on HBO, and I, I thought it was sweet. It was cute. I, it knew exactly what the film was going to be about, since it's based on the books. It sort of seems more like um, a different version of Leave It to Beaver, because, you know, Leave It to Beaver was definitely like that. Because it was set in the 50s and it definitely had a time about what was it like if if they focus on a little boy 
who gets into a lot of trouble. And he has an older brother. Yeah, they always focus on all their adventures. But with that aside, I'm, I'm going to get to the review. It stars Joey Kane in her screen debut as Ramona Crimley, along with Selena Gomez on the TV show The Wizard of Waverly Place, Hutch Dano, Jennifer Goodwin, who went on to do the TV series Once Upon a Time, John Corbett from the TV show Northern Exposure and My Big Fat Greek Wedding, Richard Monahan from iRobot, Josh Dumel from Transformers, Jason Spivak, Sandra O oh from the TV show Grey's Anatomy, and Linda Borrell. It's written by Laurie Craig who wrote the film Ella Enchanted with Anne Hathaway along with Nick Putstay and it's directed by Elizabeth Allen who did the film Aquamarine. The movie begins when a young, spunky, and creative nine-year-old girl named Ramona Quibby who's played by Joey Keane who goes on many adventures using her imagination and winds up becoming a troublemaker. She goes to school with her best friend and neighbor named Howie, who's played by Jason Spivak, and lives with her Primby family in Clitetat Street in Portland, Oregon. She has an older 15-year-old sister named Beatrice, who's played by Selena Gomez, whose nickname is simply Beesus, which Ramona started calling her since she was a baby. Along with her mother, Dorothy, who's played by Bridget Monahan, her father, Robert, who's played by John Corbett, her cat, Picky Picky, yeah, the uh, sort of a, a brownish uh, white gold cat, and her baby sister, Roberta. One day at school, Ramona was swinging around the jungle gym on the playground with Howie until she got stuck on the rings hanging upside down with her teacher Mrs. Meacham who's played by Sandra O, oh, uh, helping her out and bringing her inside her classroom. But after school she found out in the mailbox that she had a report card and she started hiding it inside the freezer so then her family won't get it. But then she took it out and found out that she wasn't doing very well at school. Since I know uh, Beesus had took out her report card and she had straight A's and B's here and there. It, they found out that she was always daydreaming and not focusing on her assignments. So then she got upset. She even says her own bad words since this is a G-rated film. Guts. And she squirts all the toothpaste around the bathroom sink. So suddenly, the next day, Robert had lost his job and undergoing with severe debt with the family. Dorothy decided to work during the day while Robert takes care of the girls and finding a new job of his own, which can be very difficult for him as it seems. But Ramona finds a better way to actually make more money by selling $1 lemonade and later $20 for a car wash. Beesus with her PJs on felt very embarrassed when she spotted her boyfriend named Henry Huggins, who was played by Hutch Dano, who was also a paper boy and a friend. And when they both drank some lemonade together, suddenly a bumblebee fell inside her drink and accidentally uh, spits all over Henry, and causing her to blame Ramona for, for this horrible moment that she caused. And actually complains about her nickname. <laughs> yeah, which leads to that scene where she says in her bedroom, <laughs> who, who actually names uh, someone named Beesus? And she says, Jesus? <laughs> but meanwhile, Aunt B, who's played by Jennifer Goodwin, K 
came back to visit the family and talks about her experience as a child and trusts Ramona for all of her entire eccentricities. Also, while Ramona still in the money-making business, Howie's uncle, Hubert, who was played by Josh Dumel, had offered her $100 to wash his entire car as a deal to have B, who has a crush on since they were young, to stay in the car, making conversations and listening to their favorite song, Eternal Flame by the Bengals, until suddenly the gear that held the car had broke off and the car went backwards into the garage, all covered with colored paint that fell from these paint buckets onto the shelf of the garage. Things didn't seem to work out for Ramona as it seems that her entire time had soon become a complete disaster. Um, especially when she had a school portrait that was totally ruined after she cracked a raw egg in her hair you know, during lunchtime as she was demonstrating from her father, you know, Robert, and made the, a disgusting reaction when the photographer asked her to say peas instead of cheese. <laughs> and yeah, everybody started making fun of her with that embarrassing photo that she had. But even worse, during that following day, she started feeling very nauseous and vomits the entire music class after she found out that her classmate, Susan, who's played by Sarah McCormick, reveals that her own father had lost his job, causing her parents to have a divorce, and her father had moved to Tacoma, yeah, Tacoma, Washington. So Robert picks Ramona up from school really early you know, after he couldn't make his attend at his first job interview since the car broke down right in front of Mrs. Meacham's class. So then Ramona and Robert decided to to make a huge art drawing mirror of her family, her friends, and everybody in the entire town for show and tell project at Mrs. Meacham's class, which she was delighted and very proud on her. But the sad part was, which I know this really chokes me up after what happened, was when Ramona and Beesis were preparing for dinner while the family were away, the pan suddenly got caught on fire and the girls were trying to put it out, you know, with Ramona using a broom, <laughs> which I know that caught on fire too. And then Beesis was using the fire extinguisher and <laughs> while she was on the phone with Henry, causes them to argue with each other. And already feeling upset that she orders Ramona to feed, feed her cat Picky Picky until sadly she was devastated to find out that the cat dies in the basement. Yes, and that was a scene that really did choke me up completely because I actually did lose a cat. Uh, before. You know, I, I had two cats. You know, one was Jackie, which I had since uh, my childhood days. And then I had another cat, you know, when I was a teenager named Alex. Yeah, well, she was a black and white cat. Yeah, with some brown fur in the mix. I had her for two years when she was a kitten. And, and then she's, I mean, she suffered a disease and yeah, and she passed away. It, it was really sad. Also, my sister did have another cat, too, named Angelica, that we also lost. So, so make that free cats instead. <laughs> yeah, it sucks to lose an animal these days. So back to the film. The girls themselves had decided to have a private funeral for Picky Picky. And during that night, they broke the news that Robert has now found a new job. Only one problem was they are planning on selling the house. Yeah. So then, preparing for the open house, the Quimby's were gardening the whole place, and Ramona reluctantly helps using the water hose and actually hit Hobart as he threw a bucket of water at B, 
and suddenly becomes a big water fight with the neighbors and then it floods the entire neighborhood backyard where Hobart finds a shoebox that was buried inside years ago filled with lots of memories yeah, such as pictures and all this other stuff that's inside that he had during his relationship with B when they were teenagers. So finally he proposed to her to be married right in front of the entire crowd and she accepts yeah, because he, he bought in the ring and, and puts it on her finger and yeah, and she was happy and sad at the same time. And the family themselves decided to have a wedding for Hobart and B. But when B booked Ramona's promise on not to get reeled in, she became very furious that she ran inside the house all the way into the attic during open house until the beam on the ground not supporting her weight uh, broke down leaving Ramona's legs dangling from the roof. Once it was cleared out Robert got really mad at Ramona for all the mature attitude she's been caught on and then she ran away from home with Dorothy helping her pack up all of her stuff in her father's suitcase and wanders off in the bus stop just as soon as she opens the suitcase and found lots of heavy stuff including his bowling ball. She found a book that has Robert drawing lots of doodles of Ramona in her mischievous ways. After that she heard her mother's voice that came from the baby's walkie-talkie and the family had soon found her and was happily reunited together. So finally at Bees and Hobart's wedding, Ramona had saved the day when she finds the wedding ring after how he drops it. And during the reception, Ramona's music class had arrived for the dance. You know, Beeses and Henry had shared a kiss and danced together. Robert had thanked Ramona for everything, especially for her teacher, Mrs. Meacham, to honor him as, as the school's new art teacher you know, after the school project that they did together. And Ramona is very delighted with all the good news as the family would not have to move at all. So that's good. <laughs> so before B and Hobart decided to leave for their honeymoon at, in Alaska, Ramona actually gave her a locket that's with her school picture and B tells Ramona that she's extraordinary. And then the movie ends when the family went back inside the house. <laughs> yeah, which leads to the end credits with them just dancing around to all the music that they had. It was very sweet. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely the perfect family film that's based on the Ramona series of books that we had. Because I did grow up on it a little bit. I, I mean, I always remember watching the TV series on PBS because I knew exactly what the story was going to be about. It had a beautiful location that was actually shot in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is in Canada. Yeah, kind of like the, the TV series was because it was shot over there. Perfect setting for Portland, Oregon because I kind of remember what Portland, Oregon looked like, even though it looks very different. You know, with the shots of some of beautiful streets beautiful town, you know, a beautiful home, and and even the elementary school that they had, and of course high school. A lot, a lot of good settings right there. I also like the fact that they actually use um, animatics, as the director actually call it, where they actually use all the animation that's put inside uh, Ramona's imagination. Yeah, especially the scene where, where she was actually, you know, <laughs> on the jungle gym, you know, swinging on these rings and then suddenly it, it transforms into a huge uh, cliff filled with uh, mountains and, and waterfalls like she was going to ready to fall inside you know, like, like it was a bridge. And, and then they even had a lot of scenes where you know, where Ramona and Howie were just uh, <laughs> jumping around that huge hole that 
the construction workers had put out you know, just to fix the back door of, of the house. So they just fly around and land into the mud. And, <laughs> and you can even see uh, Ramona just flying around on the entire town of Portland, Oregon. <laughs> like using a parachute. I thought that was cool. Not to mention a scene where, where she was in her bedroom. Yeah, they both have new bedrooms now since so Ramona and Beast used to sleep you know, on one bedroom with, with bump beds that we used to have too as kids. Yeah, they both have bedrooms now as they were growing up. And and she was like floating around in, in outer space in a dream. I thought that was cool that they did all these creations. And, and another scene where when they announced the bad news that they were going to sell the house, you can see uh, Ramona feeling very worried as she imagined that that the entire house was being picked up and dumping it in, into the street. Yeah. Some some very good animation that they put right into it, so I, I like that. But I gotta say, Joey Kane did a very good job playing the role of Ramona. I mean, she definitely reminded me of what Sarah Pauly played um, in the TV series. I mean, this is definitely the real stardom for a child actress. And I'm glad she went on to do other films after this, such as The Conjuring and uh, The All is the Great and Powerful. Selena Gomez, you know, coming from the Disney Channel and, and all this other stuff that she was doing in the past and, and I know in the future. Yeah, I thought she did a great job playing the Beasts. Uh, the 15 year old older sister you know who calls Ramona a pest <laughs> she's already dealing with her entire life especially when she meets uh, her best friend and secret boyfriend named Henry <laughs> so I, I thought she was okay in the film she even had a song for this movie uh, at the end credits so I thought it worked had a great soundtrack I mean it was done by Mark Mutterbods the same guy who was the lead singer of Devo. He created a wonderful score yeah, that's like family friendly. Has that particular 50s style feel to it. You know, with all the beautiful shots of the entire town and everything. Um, beautiful soundtrack um, all the way around by other artists including Taylor Swift. Yeah. Um, the entire cast including the John Corbett and Bridget Monaghan, as well as Sandra Oh, you know, Jennifer Goodwin, and Josh Dumel. They were all excellent. Definitely the perfect casting for this movie. Because they, they knew exactly what they were going for. You know, they had to struggle, all the debt that they've been going through, and they're trying to find a new job to help the whole entire family, you know, not having to deal with everything. Yeah, you know, kind of shows about what it was going to be like if if things are not going so well, you know, despite the fact that Ramona is just doing her mischievous ways that she that she always loves to do, you know, especially at school and at home and everywhere she goes. My favorite moment though was when uh, when she was signing up for a peanut butter contest because she was chosen to be to be entering a contest where she becomes the next girl in the peanut butter commercial. Where suddenly uh, she wants up creating her own tiara since she didn't have one, and and she was doing you know, all of her dance moves, swinging around until suddenly she accidentally fell inside a giant peanut butter sandwich, <laughs> which messes up her hair. Yeah, which I know Robert had to cut it all up. <laughs> that was a great moment. But with that aside, uh, it's a very good film. Definitely recommend it uh, for all families out there. You know, it, it's for everybody. You know, I'm, I'm glad to see that this movie was G-rated because that's exactly what the film should be. Instead of being, you know, you know, PG, it was definitely crystal clear. You know, very clean and and it works for all families of all ages, especially for those who grew up with the books. And Beverly clearly, who's who's now 99 years old is is very proud after all this time since she couldn't get the movie rights since her last book was um, back in 1999 so she only had like eight stories all set up but nevertheless 
She definitely remembers everything that she did. Since Click Attack Street, she remembers uh, during her childhood. And it was cool. So, yeah. Um, definitely check this movie out. It's definitely worth watching. I, I really did enjoy it. I, I liked it. So anyway, I give Ramona and Beasts four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.